I'm back at the Taipei Bike Show for a look at more of the hottest new cycling tech because this place is absolutely huge. There's over 65,000 square meters of exhibition space and over a thousand individual exhibitors. So strap yourselves in and let's get hunting for tech. Yesterday, I saw a carbon disc brake rotor and I thought I'd seen it all. Well, I was wrong, because today I found this, which is a ceramic coated disc brake rotor. Ceramic coated, it's like automotive race tech coming to bikes. And the makers, HCM, reckon that being ceramic, it has a number of advantages. So it offers superior wear, superior modulation, superior heat dissipation, superior wet weather braking, and weight savings too. How cool is that? It's seriously cool tech. Plus, the most important thing, that would look absolutely amazing on my bike. I love custom paint. And I'm over at the Fuji stand where the Japanese brand is showcasing its Remix custom painting program. And they've got loads of beautiful examples up on the wall here, including ones with these really nice fade paint schemes. And they're actually painted by a single guy back at Fuji, which is really cool. Now, to design your bike, you can use an app where you can actually change all the colors, the graphics, the style of paint, so you can have fades in there. And you can also change the background color so you can see what it looks like in real life. It gives you a, a better appreciation. But if you go into a Fuji dealer, then you can see these little color badges as well, which give an accurate representation of what the color is like in real life. And there's all these different ones you can choose from for the, for the graphics as well. I think I would go for black rainbow and maybe the rainbow chrome silver, which I think I would actually call that unicorn blood. Power meters are becoming more and more affordable. And a great example of that is this, the Arrowfly. Now we actually reported on a prototype version of this on the GCN show, but this is now a production version you can buy. And you can actually get it in this set here for just 239 US dollars, which is incredible. But it's got a really innovative design. So this actually attaches onto your wheel valve. And from there, it is able to, to measure the force going through the pedals. There's also a sort of sensor pod, uh, the brains of the unit, which you can fit elsewhere on your bike, and a speed uh, and cadence sensor as well. But that is a, a really sort of neat and innovative design. I'd be intrigued to see how it stands up when it actually measures power, but cool. Ho, oh, ho, oh, fully carbon shoes. These shoes are actually called the Power Racing S, and they're from a Taiwanese company called UTS. Now, perhaps the most remarkable thing about them, apart from the fact they're fully carbon, is the price. Because you may remember Mavic's incredibly bling Comet shoes, which cost a thousand US dollars. Well, for a limited time only, these shoes are available for 280 US dollars, which is, well, quite exceptional, really. They're about 300 grams for a size 45, and, well, they just look amazing. Look at those. Another interesting feature is the heel retention pad at the back, which is actually adjustable using the retention dial there. That's really cool. I've not really seen that before, but it helps adjust for different people's size heels. A bike that's really caught my eye is this, which is the Liv Langma. Now, Liv is the female specific sort of division of Giant Bikes. And the reason why Giant has a female specific range of bikes is because it fundamentally believes that men and women are very different and it's actually used data from NASA which has said that if you have a man and a woman who are the same height then proportionally on average the woman will have a shorter torso and longer legs than a man of the same height and so consequently women need bikes that are of a different geometry to men and so that's exactly what they've done. And also the nice thing is, is you've got a woman's bike here that looks absolutely awesome. In the past, some brands have basically taken the men's frame and then adjusted the contact points with a sort of more padded saddle, a shorter stem and sprayed it pink. But it's nice to see a bike that has a really stunning paint job. I'd quite like to have a bike that has a paint job like that myself. So the Langma is a uh, climbing bike 
uh, and consequently it's designed uh, with certain features in mind for that. So it's got a nice boxy square down tube that really optimizes stiffness into the bottom bracket. And also you've got some added comfort built in as well with the sort of signature uh, giant dropped top tube here so you have more of the d-shaped seat post exposed and therefore you can get more deflection of that seat post to add more comfort as well it's a really cool package and uh, giant says that this one will be available with a full 105 group set for around 2000 599 pounds in the uk i'm not sure on the pricing for the rest of the world so you'll have to forgive me on that but there's an even higher spec one around the corner so i'm going to quickly show you that one Check this out. This is the Live Langma Pro Zero. It's the top of the range model and it has an absolutely stunning paint job. The Live calls this paint job Sambo and it, it's just this amazing iridescent glittery paint that changes under the light. And I hope it's coming through in, in the camera you can see because it is really spectacular when you see it in person. And I really like the paint job on the other one too, that one was called Chameleon. But it's great to see women's bikes that just look so awesome. I also really like this really neat headset detail here with this uh, compressed carbon headset space which is just really neat and tidy the way that sort of flows into the rest of the frame. This model though comes with Ultegra Di2 and a Pioneer power meter. That is seriously awesome. Topeak also has a new Ninja bottle cage. Now this is a clever bottle cage because it has a modular pod on the back to which you can then attach different items depending on what you need for your ride. So you can see here, you've got the CO2 cartridges, but you can also attach a multi-tool or a sort of larger sort of saddle pack type, well, it's not a saddle pack because it's on a bottle cage, but you get the idea. You can put an inner tube in there and perhaps even a tool or whatever you need. Now you can adapt this depending on your type of ride. So the kind of things that you might want to carry for a short race are going to be different from the kind of things that you'd want to carry for a round the world trip. So depending on what you're doing, you can fit different things, which is really neat. But if you want to use your own bottle cage, there's also this neat solution as well. So this is like a sort of washer that fits underneath your bottle cage with the modular ninja mount on the back so you can still use all the different accessories that fit on the back in, in case you're wondering this is two co2 cartridges and a micro booster inflator on the back it's not what i thought it was which was action man's scuba diving equipment another award-winning product from the taipei show is this from vision which is the tfa aero bar tfa actually stands for the fastest aero bar and it's well it's an aero cockpit that you can fit either onto a road bike or a triathlon bike in order to make it faster but its main selling point and perhaps the most exciting thing about it is how adjustable it is so in addition to the normal adjustments that you can make on tri bar setups like this where you can adjust the pads and bring them in closer or fore and aft adjustment of the actual tri bar extensions themselves there's a whole load of other adjustments. So the base bar can actually be flipped. You can raise the whole thing with spaces here, but perhaps the most interesting and coolest feature is you can adjust the angle of the tri bars and raise them up by 16 degrees to get into that sort of praying mantis position where you've got your hands in front of your face, which has become a really popular position for, well, the sort of fastest time trialists out there. There's also been a lot of attention paid to cable integration. So you can route cables internally through this system to help it fit with modern bikes that have got lots of heavy cable integration. But one of the things I also really like is the way that you can actually fit this onto a road bike and make the front end really neat and aero. So if you're perhaps wanting to have a go at doing some uh, time trials or a triathlon perhaps, and you're wanting to make your bike more aerodynamic, but you don't want to spend all the money on a full-on time trial bike setup, then this is a good option that's really cost effective. I hope you've enjoyed this video at the latest and greatest new tech here at Taipei. And if you have, then please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And to see more tech, if you haven't had enough, then please click on this video down here.